So it's about compact scalable model. We, we will see why we need it. You, you know we have in, in UMS uh, GAN 0.15, GAN 0.25, which is open in foundry mode. And foundry mode means that we need to provide what we call PDK to our customers to do MMIC design. So first of all, I will discuss about the motivation of this uh, uh, modeling activity. I will discuss about the kind of models we can use, the GAN specificities. Uh, then I will move to the uh, importance of extrinsic extraction to, in order to get very good um, uh, modeling. Intrinsic, and we will discuss again about uh, pulse measurement, about traps, and, uh, and uh, for the next point about thermal simulations, which is also really key for GAN because uh, a lot of parameters in the GAN model actually depends on the uh, junction temperature or the temperature somewhere in the transistor where you need to to, to know the temperature, which, which is really challenging. And we will finish with some example uh, to validate. So motivation, I will very go quickly with, on this chart. We have two, is it working, the, uh, yeah, the laser? But I do not, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, okay. So we have two, two GAN uh, processes uh, open, uh, the GH25 and the GH15. You, we already mentioned yesterday the increase of the uh, GAN needs, especially the GAN on SIC, which is the main part for uh, millimeter wave and, and RF applications. So it's growing strongly. It's, uh, uh, for sure, we experiment that. Uh, it's growing and it's mainly used for defense, for telecom, for 5G, for fixed wireless access, and for SATCOM today, definitely. So, and we have a lot of uh, customers using our GAN process in foundry mode, which is the motivation to that. We, we released the, the 0.15 micrometer in 2016, and um, now, uh, what do we need to provide to our customers in, in Foundry? It's what we call the, the PDK, Process Design Kit. PDK has to include libraries of components, passive elements, but active elements also. So the model, the nonlinear model for transistor. And importantly also, the scalable nonlinear model. Because the main activity of RF designer is to do uh, MMIC optimization. They need to optimize the stage, uh, the first stage of an amplifier, the second stage to determine the best uh, compromise in terms of transistor topologies. And for that, they need scalable model. Uh, we can say that without scalable model, it's very difficult to do optimized MMICs. And we, we need accurate models, and especially on GH15, you know, on GH15, we uh, initially worked at, uh, at up to 38 gigahertz, and we discovered that through the quality of the electric pole model at uh, high frequency, it's possible to go beyond, to go close to the Fmax, and uh, this is why I, I will discuss now. And for millimeter wave application, we, of course, we need the core model to, for the nonlinear part, very accurate, but we also need a very accurate parameter extraction for uh, parasitic ex uh, elements. Because parasitic elements of this classical model, you can see on the right, are uh, very important to determine the uh, Fmax of the transistor. What are the possible models? So I think you know that uh, physical models are um, very accurate, could be very accurate. They are based on physical equations and parameters. Uh, they can provide a lot of information, but unfortunately, they are very difficult to set up. Uh, that uh, It takes a lot of time to make calculations. It's definitely not scalable. Uh, so, okay, this is for investigation, for characterization, for uh, research. Then there is a behavioral, so it's not suitable for MMIC. We have the behavioral black box models, which is known directly uh, extracted from measurement, from static, from pulse measurement. Uh, unfortunately, these, uh, these models are uh, a bit limited because it's quite difficult to make 
uh, extrapolations from these black box models. And so there is a last uh, option, which is uh, what we call the empirical model or compact model based on equivalent circuit description and extracted from S parameter and current measurement, but also based on simulation. We will, we will discover that. It provides uh, a very good accuracy and a more flexible domain, and domain, for example, of number of gates, uh, gate unitary width, or topology of transistor, and they are widely used with MMIC CAT solutions, so very easily implementable in ADS or microwave office. Extraction is not so easy, and we will discover that now. So for, finally, for our designers and for our customers in Foundry mode, this is uh, definitely the best, the best uh, choice. And I mentioned already the scalability. Definitely, this kind of empirical model are or have to be uh, scalable. Of course, uh, we start with measurement. We need measurement at device level. We need S parameter measurement. We need a pulsed measurement, pulsed IV measurement. We need also S parameter in pulsed mode. Uh, and when we add to that also 3D thermal simulation, I will explain why we need um, really s simulations for the thermal topics. Then we do the model extractions based on measurement. We will uh, explain how, basically. And we need at this level also, and again it's very important, to determine the junction temperature. And um, <clears throat> through the electrical model, which is called now electrothermal model, we implement the temperature modeling through a network uh, in the um, electrical description of the model. And finally, we can do the validation by comparing the S parameter measurement, the pulse measurement, but uh, e eventually we also compare at transistor and at MMIC level. GAN specificities compared to other C5 technologies. Of course, there is a gate. This is not specific. Uh, uh, there is source and drain. This is not specific to GAN. What is specific is probably the presence of what we call the famous field uh, plate uh, on top. Uh, in order to, you know, this field plate being introduced to uh, minimize the maximum field, electrical field. So to distribute more the electrical field in order to increase a little bit the breakdown voltage. And this is uh, definitely introducing some parasitics at the level of uh, a gate to source, gate to drain capacitance. So the parameters for scaling are the number of gates and the unitary gate width, I call uh, WU, and the number of gates is N. Okay, this is quickly to uh, summarize uh, what is the model for, for a GAN or for a 3.5 device. Uh, taken into account in blue, some parasitics like uh, the uh, impedance for the uh, three ports, so for the gate, for the, for the source also, and for the drain, by uh, description of uh, inductor, parasitic capacitor to the ground, and the in red, you can see the active part of the transistor, which is mainly uh, controlled by a charge in the channel, uh, the charge in the channel being responsible for the transconductance or for the drain current, but also for the uh, CGS and CGD uh, nonlinear um, parameter. And in addition uh, to the charge description, there is also the output conductance and parasitics uh, intrinsic, sorry, uh, CDS um, parameter. Ideally, all these blue and red are separated. Unfortunately, the real things uh, are uh, sometimes a bit different and a part, for example, of the uh, access resistance are maybe sometimes non-linear, non which makes things more difficult to extract. So, of course, models can be linear, 
uh, just at one biasing point, and we use typically this linear model for low noise amplification, or non-linear di with dynamic voltage input. This is needed for power amplification design. For uh, parasitic extraction, a very common method is to use on, on the right, you can see, to use a transistor in the on uh, state, but at, with VD0, uh, so there is no GM, no amplification, it's a pure passive device, and we can use the transistor in two states, one is on, on top, with a, a positive or zero voltage on the gain, on the gate, sorry, and through this uh, configuration, after the S parameter measurement, with the Z matrix, you can calculate a combination of parasitics. Then, in the off state, with a, a transistor fully pinched, but with still a VD0, you can, with the uh, transformation of the uh, S matrix in Y matrix, you can determine uh, also a combination of the uh, access parasitic elements. And by calculation, you can extract from these two combinations all the values of the parasitic elements. As I mentioned, the field plate on top of the gate will introduce some additional parasitics which have to be taken into account because, unfortunately, these additional parasitics will reduce significantly the cutoff frequency of the transistor. So, for parasitic identification, how do, do, we, do we do that? We, we can do a direct extraction by... Uh, there is a very simple method which is uh, also used today, which is to use amorphous transistor. So there is no active area. We just use um, boron or hydrogen or proton implantation in order to destroy the active area. And then we got finally a transistor on the right where we, there is no channel, uh, so no, conduct, no, no conduct, uh, conductive channel. And we can perform some passive uh, S parameter measurement to extract the parasitics very properly. When we do that, the drawback is that we need to have a significant number of transistors on the, on, on the wafer with no active area in order to determine the value of the parameters according to the uh, scalable parameters, so the number of gates and the width. So we need uh, space. But this is interesting to do. Uh, another approach we, we, we tried, and we tried successfully, is to replace this measurement of amorphous transistor by an EM uh, simulation. EM simulation, we, we use uh, definitely Passwave ADS, and we can uh, define a topology of the transistor. You can see on the right topology of the transistor with the field plate and without the field plate. For sure, for our MMIC simulation, we have a full stack available on the ADS PDK, which has to be a bit refined, of course, here for the description of the stack uh, of the of the field plate, because it's it's really specific to the transistor, and generally speaking, the customers don't need to simulate the transistor level, so they don't need to have the description of the field plate. But for this purpose, we have to uh, refine a little bit the, 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 the PDK. We can do automatic model, model generation from the GH15 library, from the layout, 2D uh, view. We can generate automatically the 3D view. And we can, through the introduction of some specific derived layers, do the EM simulation in order to estimate the effect of the parasite. And you can see here the difference between, uh, or the good agreement between the simulation of this passive transistor with the measurement we, we got on uh, some samples of transistors where, where there is no active uh, region. And through this good agreement, we are able to calculate some uh, global parameters like the input capacitance or output capacitance. So basically CGS plus the parasitics, CGD plus the parasitic, CDS and so on. 
and we can see there is a good prediction of the S12 shape induced by the field plate uh, by comparing the two, uh, the two uh, evolutions with and without field plates. So not going into the details of that, but through all this, we can uh, simulate all the topology we need in order to build the uh, evolution of the parameters versus the topology of the transistor, number of gates and uh, unitary width. So it means we don't need to have uh, many transistors to be measured. We can do by, by simulation. And just by comparing with few topologies, uh, which have been really measured, we can assess our uh, model. From this model, we can then establish some rules of scalings, which are directly linked to the transistor topology. Because, for, for example, for the parasitics, you have a part of the parasitics which is proportional to the unitary gateways, and you have a part which is just linked to the manifold or access uh, bus of the drain or bus of, uh, of, the gate, of the gate, and then you can deduce the rules uh, through that in order to build a fully scalable model. Then, um, for EM-based uh, linear model description, we, we start with, with a low current density in order to limit at the beginning the self-heating, as explained by by Frédéric, at the beginning, we, we need to, to avoid self-heating. Uh, the core linear elements are assumed, which is validated afterward by uh, comparison, that the core model is di directly proportional to, to W, U, and to the N number of gates. Source inductance and parasitic capacitance are uh, then uh, deduced from the uh, previous simulations, and we can do the comparison of EM simulation with S parameter measurement. So it's a first step to the. You can see that for some parameters, we can distribute them uh, over the topologies in order to refine the, the, the quality of the, of the model. Now, coming to the intrinsic part, which is a nonlinear part, we know that. There are uh, traps effects and uh, just a representation of the output conductance or uh, the inverse of the output conductance. Due to the trap effects, you can observe a, a change between the, the low frequency to the high frequency. This is definitely uh, to be taken into account in the model. Actually, I have, I have to say, for the purpose of the design, we don't need to take uh, exactly into account the frequency or the cutoff frequency. We don't need. We just need to, to take into account the, eff the effect because we know the designers will use a very high frequency and they will compare with a, a DC curve at zero. So we, we don't need to have a, a, a clear description of the cutoff frequency, which is temperature dependent, trap dependent, and so on. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a, a thermal phenomena and, and, and a, a trap effects are depending on the bias condition. And definitely, when you compare, I think it's the next slide, for the pulse measurement, we do IV pulse measurement. So we start from a Keyesian voltage, which is generally, uh, in GAN, we use AB class. And from this uh, AB class, we do pulse, short pulse, and during the, the pulse, uh, here, here, we can do S parameter measurement also, in, in order to also accurately um, construct the model at the temperature which is controlled by the biasing point. Okay, and then, uh, for sure, if you compare now, this is a bit uh, 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 not ideal, but uh, caricatural behavior, with a pulse with the IV curve, you can see the IV curve in, in uh, black. It's really different because in the IV curve, there is self-heating, which is creating a current decrease, a very, cur a very sh strong current decrease. And uh, for sure, definitely, the pulse measurement and the uh, uh, 
DC curves are different for the two reasons we have mentioned this morning, thermal effects and traps. <coughs> so, for sure, we also use the S parameter measurement during the pulse in order to extract some elements of the models like the capacitance, intrinsic capacitance, because the extrinsic we don't need normally to, to use this pulse measurement to do. It's already done before. So now to take into account the, the, the traps, uh, which is really needed in, in GAN device, especially drain lag, because we at UMS we have uh, more or less suppressed the, the, the gate light through the uh, work on the passive gate passivation uh, or around gate passivation. Uh, we need to take into account, as, as it was ex also explained by Frederic, the difference between uh, capturing section and, uh, and emission rate which are very different. So when you compare the IV curve in blue, this one, which is a DC uh, with the pulsed IV at uh, uh, zero voltage, there is a small difference. Then when you pulsed from a A or AB point, you have a stronger difference. But when you compare with the load pool, simulation in a real case, sometimes you may observe some difference which can be due, uh, so this is not systematic on all GAN processes, but can be due to the fact that the pulse we use are, are too, too long, probably not sufficiently short to take into account, into account all the, the, the traps. Okay. Pulse may be too long in some case, in some technology case, for accurate modeling. So definitely channel current also depends on the trapping status. And for that, we use, uh, which was developed in, in partnership with uh, XLIM, uh, and shown in the box was shown by uh, Frederic, we use what we call envelope tracking detector inside the model in order to determine the trap uh, states according to the history of the transistor. So when I say history, it's very often linked to the maximum voltage, uh, drain voltage swing, uh, which control the states of the, of, the, of the traps. In addition, now <laughs> we need to take into account the temperature, which is also very key. So for that, we, we start with uh, uh, simulations. I will show you after why. We do a simulation on uh, ANSYS, so we reduce the, um, the description to a quarter of the transistor. We can do very accurate simulations. We, the reference temperature is the backside of, of the wafer. And uh, we calculate the temperature increase at the junction level. Uh, according to the temperature dissipated in the in the channel. In addition, for gas, uh, sorry, for GAN on SIC, we need to take into account uh, specific additional uh, resistance, which is linked to the interface between the GAN and the silicon carbide. We will see now that uh, uh, how we can um, validate this simulation. And from this simulation, we can extract a kind of uh, RTH, parametric RTH, which depends on the transistor topology and also on the um, backside temperature, temperature uh, ambient temperature. Why do we do that? Because uh, actually there are some methods to measure the temperature. One is uh, uh, infrared measurement in the re region between the drain and the gate, which gives a, a, a mean temperature. One is a Raman temperature, closer to the junction temperature, but not at the junction temperature, because unfortunately, the junction spot, the, the highest temperature spot is below the fill plate, and impossible to, to, to check and there is also another method, which is thermoreflectance, 
which allows some dynamic measurement on top of the uh, structure. And so you can see on the right that there are, between the different methods, big difference in terms of temperature estimation, and that even so with the thermal 3D simulation, we got a higher temperature. Uh, you can see the difference, 75%. I, I don't like this 75% because in temperature it doesn't mean, mean nothing, the 75, but uh, um, yeah, more than a, a 30 degree difference. So, but it shows that when you need to have the real highest junction temperature, and we need that at least for reliability assessment, because for reliability you need to do calculation versus temperature. If you have uh, an offset in the temperature, it's not uh, proper. But by chance, and we are lucky with that, through the 3D simulation, we can do the simulation of the uh, infrared uh, window we can do the simulation of the Raman window, and we can do the simulation of the uh, thermoreflectance window. And finally, we can compare our simulations, which are the, the dot line, with the measurement done experimentally, and we have a good agreement for the, with the infrared method, with the Raman, and with the thermoreflectance. And in addition, I mentioned the that because it's um, very interesting. Also, from a time domain point of view, the thermoreflectance method can uh, show, uh, and we have a good agreement. So it means in our model, it's possible also to take into account some time constant for the thermal effect. And so through this validation, finally, we believe that our estimation of the maximum junction temperature there is really uh, good, which is uh, a factor of success for the quality of the model. So in addition to thermal effect inside the transistor, we can do also, because sometimes you need to put your MMIC in a package, in that, in that time we need to, to, to simulate not only the transistor but the package around, and for that we can use a full simulation with ANSYS. We can, uh, according to the customer or internal designer case, we can do a model reduction and a reduction of yeah, a model reduction with CAD FEM, which is a specific tool. We use the solution of this uh, ROM uh, in ADS in order to uh, add the thermal description of the package uh, and to complete the uh, thermal description of the transistor by the de description of the package, which finally allows the simulation of the full MMIC in uh, its environment. But okay, it's a bit uh, complex, and uh, there is a reference of the paper here if you are interested. Global validation, now quickly, I have a few examples. S parameter measurement, it's, I mentioned it's very, very important. Here it's the evolution of the K factor with different uh, topology. You can see two fingers, four fingers, eight fingers versus frequency. K factor for different uh, unitary gateways, 20 micrometer, 100 micrometer. Why is it important in order to calculate the transition MSG mag? Because as I told you before, on GH15 we want to, to use a transistor not at 20, not at 30, but more at 40, 42, even même some designers are trying at, at 45 gigs. Of course, the gain is reduced, but still possible to extract gain. And we have really good agreement between the measurement and, and the simulation. Another uh, point to do that is definitely to compare the S parameter. Uh, you can see on, on top S parameters for different topologies of transistor. Here also very important because uh, this is for power and non-linear model one of the best way to control the quality of the model is the load, load pool comparison. So you can do load pool for power, for power added efficiency, or for uh, even for linearity in some case. 
and it's really important because if you take into account correctly the evolution of the drain current versus the input power, um, then you can estimate correctly the power added efficiency of the transistor and you can not only estimate but optimize during the design phase the power added efficiency or the linearity. Some examples now, this is uh, for last uh, two or three years, it's a quasi MMIC, it's a Doherty, Dagan Doherty um, in the range of six gigs, showing really a good agreement between the gain and the simulation here from 5. Point, uh, let's say 5.5 to, to 6.5, and a good agreement on the right curve with the power added efficiency at uh, 30, 30 uh, mainly power added efficiency close to the saturation, uh, more than 40%, and with a 6.5 dB back off, still at uh, 30%, uh, which is uh, very good, but uh, this is a uh, Doherty uh, uh, principle. Another example, I think this is the last one. It's really a recent design we, we, we did on a, uh, uh, GH15. It's a 20 watt three stage KBN power amplifier for uh, the targeted market is a SATCOM uplink. And um, so this is the result we just got very recently showing the uh, power on the, on, the, on the right. So between 43 to 44 dBm output power uh, and the power added efficiency and uh, the curve are at uh, compression, increasing compression level, the level of power added efficiency at uh, 27 dBm input power. So it's really showing a good agreement. Now all designers they have to work uh, near this uh, low band 27 to understand why there is a, a small uh, hole in, in, in the, in the uh, P-out, but uh, this is showing the good agreement. And yeah. I think this is my last slide. Thank you for your attention. Long live India and France friendship.